I've received this question from a lot of uh, broadcaster friends of mine, non-engineers, and the question is, well, does this solar storm and all these aurora borealis things that are happening, is that going to impact me receiving programming by satellite? And the short answer, no, with a caveat. And I'll get to the caveat in a little bit. Background here on this. So this uh, past weekend um, that I'm recording this, we had an amazing uh, solar storm that came across the planet and created some beautiful aurora borealis effects in the, in the atmosphere. And I was able to capture some incredible pictures of it. And I'm gonna share those here with you. This is the first time I have ever seen these, the lights, the aurora borealis. It was incredible. Um, this was one of the most unique things that I've ever been able to witness. And just watching it, you know, as as the lights go up from basically horizon all the way straight up, seeing the solar wind ripples in the sky. And anyways, it was gorgeous. But the question, you know, like I started off this video with was, what about satellite programming? Is that going to impact my programming? So I said the answer is no. And I'm going to stand by that because it's not going to impact the payload radios on the satellite. There's two parts to the satellite. You have the satellite operations itself, the people who fly the satellite, uh, TTNC, telemetry, something in control. Anyways, they're the guys that fly the satellite. Make sure it's in the right orbit, in the right orientation, in the right position, and making sure that it's where it needs to be. And then you have the payload guys. And those are the ones that we as broadcasters that we interact with because we are the payload of that satellite. So there's radios on the satellite, transponders, and basically we shoot a RF link up to a, the satellite and that turns around onto a different frequency and comes back down to Earth, to Earth stations, downlink stations, blah, 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 blah. Now, the frequencies that we're dealing with are not impacted by these aurora borealis and solar storms like that. Hi, I'm gonna take a moment here and recognize the sponsor of today's video, LinkUp Communications. When your content has to get to your audience, you can count on their content distribution using XDS and other industry leading platforms. LinkUp has provided distribution solutions with the highest degree of reliability for over three decades. If you're wanting more information about their services or just who are they, visit their website at linkupcommunications.com. And now back to the video. Where it does become an issue is where the, the solar storm is so strong that it starts creating drag on the satellite. Now, geostationary satellites really aren't stationary. They are orbiting the Earth at the same speed as the Earth is rotating. If you were to put a tennis ball on a string and just start spinning around with the tennis ball out in front of you, that's exactly what the same thing is happening with the geostationary or, uh, satellite. So it's actually moving a little bit faster than you are on the ground, but so that it appears stationary in the sky. Okay, it still is impacted by uh, drag. There is a little bit of atmosphere out there. It's not like a hard line on the earth uh, where atmosphere stops. It kind of just gets weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker as it gets out. So there's still a little bit of atmosphere out there. And there's also the effects of gravity. So as the satellite is going, every so often they have to do a reboost which means push it back up because it'll, it'll start coming closer to the ground. And then they'll just have to boost it back up just enough to get it back up into the right spot in orbit. So when you have a solar storm and you have that increased drag from all the particles coming from the solar winds 
and the atmosphere and anyways what happens is the drag starts increasing and it starts falling a little bit so then they have to boost it back up now that takes fuel and that fuel is a finite amount on the satellite the satellite only has a limited limited amount and they kind of budget it out with some extra for the lifetime of the satellite now there's a couple of satellites that had to do some um, more radical uh, reorientations in their lifetime which means that well they hit their lifetime and a lot of them will go past their mission lifetime but some of these are going nope we don't have enough to really you know keep it up in the sky so anyways if a satellite has to do too many uh, movements uh, corrections in orbit then you start using up too much fuel it won't be able to last as long and that's kind of one of the biggest limiting factors is the fuel on board the satellite now i did say there was a caveat there's a thing called a carrington level event back in the 18 late 1800s basically mid mid late 1800s when we were still using telegraphs we had a huge solar storm that impacted the earth there was no real electrical technology going on back then. So it really didn't have an impact on Earth and life on Earth. Today, it would be a devastating event. So that's another topic for another time. But basically what happens is you have power lines which become big antennas. It's very similar to like an EMP, but the power lines and pipelines and things like that become antennas and start soaking up this electrical energy, causing overloads in in uh, transformers, and you start having power failures and all that fun stuff. Now, for a satellite, a Carrington level event would cause extreme charging of the surface of the satellite. It basically would electrically charge it, and it would uh, damage the solar panels and cause overloads of the batteries which would cause the satellite to fail. The satellites run on batteries and solar panels. So that would be the only time when it would be an issue. But otherwise, enjoy the beautiful pictures that I was able to capture. I'm sure you've seen many online. And uh, if you had an opportunity to, to see it in person, that is really, really special, especially being this far south on the planet, you know, you don't really get to see it that often this far south. And it was incredible. All right, that's all. Short video today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, keep learning. Learn more about satellites and the Aurora Borealis. That is really interesting. Okay, bye.